In this video I'll be giving you my first impressions of the Quest 3 and if I think it's a good headset for sim racing or not. But as I quickly discovered there are some pretty bad things here too and I'll be explaining what those are a little later on. Now I will be comparing this to my trusty Valve Index which is what I've been using for sim racing for the last four years now. Anyway enough of that let's get into it. So first let's talk about the good points. So the first thing that I noticed when I took the Quest 3 out of the box was just how light it is. I mean, this comes in at 571 grams. And compared to my Valve Index, which weighs 810 grams, this is a super light headset. Now, secondly, it generates a lot less heat than my Valve Index. And for those that know anything about the Valve Index, this is a big problem that it does suffer with quite a bit. Next is the image quality and this blew me away. The quality of the Quest 3 pancake lenses is just incredible and it's a huge noticeable difference to my Valve Index. It's super super clear and crisp and in fact this brings me on to the last thing about the Quest 3 and this just blew me away. And that is that I don't have to wear my prescription glasses I use for monitor use or buy any VR prescription lenses like I fitted in my Valve Index when I use the Quest 3. When I first put this headset on to just set it up, I was blown away by how clear the image quality was. I could read all of the text. It was all super clear and crisp. Now my prescription is only a slight one as I mentioned, I only need them for anything up to a metre away. But I can only assume this is down to the new pancake lenses, but this is massive for me. And given that the plan is that other members of the family will be using the Quest 3, this is also big as it just means that they can put it on and use it straight away without having to remove any lens inserts. Now onto the not so good, and the first issue that I found was when I put the headset on, the facial part wasn't as soft or as comfortable as it is on my Valve Index. In fact, I found it to be actually quite firm. And after about 30 minutes of driving, I started to notice it more and more. Now to fix this, I'd have to then buy the Quest 3 silicon facial interface just to get some basic comfort issues sorted. And this is after already paying £619 for the headset. For me, basic comfort doesn't cost the earth. In fact, Meta's own silicon facial interface for the Quest 3 is just short of £40. But this should be included in the design right from the beginning, in my opinion. Now, the next thing I noticed is that in the Oculus Quest software, there isn't an option to choose 120Hz. You can only choose 72, 80 or 90Hz. Now there is an option to tick a box which is described something like use 120 hertz if supported by the software. But when I go into Steam VR, I can only choose up to 90 hertz, and the same for in the Oculus software too. So it seems the Meta hasn't enabled this option yet. So if you're buying this headset thinking you can run this straight out of the box at 120 hertz, then you'll be mistaken, at least for now anyway. Now I expect a software update will come soon as it did for the Quest 2, but as of recording this video, it isn't an option. Now if you're finding this content of use, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button because it does help me out a massive amount. Now the other thing that I found with the Quest 3 is the microphone is really bad, especially compared to my Valve Index. Now when I had a look around, there are a lot of users complaining about this problem and it seems to be down to a very badly designed fault because the microphone is located on the bottom of the headset where the charging pins are located which is right next to your nose. So I'm not sure how much Meta can fix this with software but there could be other options opened up such as use of external microphones through Bluetooth or through the audio jack but again this means buying something else that's extra to fix a very basic need. Now I've done some basic testing, I've been running the headset at 72Hz and at 90Hz and cranked the rendering resolution up to the max of 1.5 times. Changed the encoding bitrate in the Oculus Debug tool to 500, I'm sure I can go higher than that and I've set the link sharpening to quality. And that's all I've done so far. Now, as I mentioned, I'm running a 4090. 
I have a 10th gen 10900K CPU, so it's not the, the latest, but still a good CPU. So I'm not really sure how far this can be pushed, but I've got to say that as it stands right now, I'm so happy with the image quality and the performance of the headset that I don't feel that I need to even tinker anymore. But in the spirit of testing this out, I'll be doing that in the coming weeks, so keep an eye out for any upcoming videos. So is this a good headset for sim racing? Well, actually, no, it's not, because this is a great headset for sim racing. So if you're wanting to try out VR for the very first time, or you're looking to upgrade your current headset, I can highly recommend the Quest 3. If the Quest 3 is outside of your budget, then check out the video that's on screen now, where I talk about three great budget headsets for sim racing. Catch you in the next one.